you've done it. You've made it through the 2024 fantasy footy season. Has it been kind to you? Have you had a good year? Or is this year something that you'd rather just forget? Regardless of, we are here for our final AFL Fantasy and Super Coach Strategy Roundtable to help you through this final week of 2024. We want to talk captains. We do want to open up the 2025 Black Book. We're going to, of course, look at fixtures, vice captaincy loopholes, and the way you can maximize your team's output for this final round of your fantasy season. Joining me on this week's strategy roundtable, as he has right throughout, not only this year, but since he joined the coaches panel last year. It's Mini Mug. Hey, mate, good to have you back on the pod and one big last week of fantasy fantasy footy for us to enjoy this year. Yep, one more to go. One more round. League finals for a lot of people as well. So hopefully you've made your grand final and can have a good... We can help you along your way to hopefully win it. And yeah, let's get cracking. Maybe we should start there at the league finals space then. For people that play a more traditional cadence, they've built their league in such a way that the final round of the year is when they play their league matchups. Now, this episode, we are talking a a mashup of Supercoach and AFL Fantasy. So in AFL Fantasy, you've got guaranteed two trades. Supercoach, you might have been a little bit more... Uh, conservative with your approaches should leagues have been your play. And so maybe there are some coaches that have got one or two. I'd be shocked if anyone's got a boost. Remember those and and could pull a three trade maneuver for us this week. Uh, But what should coaches that are purely focused on leagues, what should they be doing knowing they can see their opponent's side, at least pre-trade cadence? uh, Hmm. What should they be doing? Should they be looking to nullify an opposition's player that could be potentially taking that matchup away from you? Or should they be looking to create some separation from their opponent? Where do you sit in that approach? Uh, I think let's start at Supercoach because it's a bit easier. You can have a look at your team. You can look at where you're matching, where you're different. And you can look at how many trades you've got left and how many donuts you might have and your opponent might have, you know? If you're both going in with a healthy 22, you maybe only have two or three players different. Look at the two or three that you've got that are different. You've got to trade up your sleeve. Do you want to consider one of those three as having a bad matchup and trade them to someone else who has a good matchup? Maybe take a little bit more of a separation away from them. Those are the types of things you want to look at there. Um, in AFL Fantasy, you've got two trades. You also can't really see what your opposition coach is really doing through the round as easily just the way that the interface uploads and updates over the round but you can do the same sort of thing if you look at your four or five six different players that you've got maybe it's a couple of defenders a couple of mids forwards figure out who has the bad matchups figure out who has the good matchups and try and do their separation from there so like do your homework have a look on dfs have a look at you know have you got a free man or mid playing against port adelaide in the last game of the year last game of the regular season at least maybe consider trading them out because it's a relatively tough matchup do you want to trade into a midfielder playing against uh north melbourne so like a hawthorne midfielder against west coast geelong midfielder maybe not but here's a good one that you could actually go for you could go for a midfielder playing against richmond i took miller noah anderson mm. those are the sorts of things you want to be looking at and trying to maximize those points gains and the separation if you need it away from the opposition coach that you've got. would you also take let, let's put that on a parallel track for those that are thinking from a rankings perspective again a, a little bit easier in afl fantasy mm. to see the movements of live round rankings where a super coach you're trying to keep an eye on who's doing what mid-round and you've mm. got you're flying blind on where they're at in terms of trades left options. Knowing again, we could be without Tim English this week. We could be without Harry Sheasel this week. Even if an appeal successful, we will be without Dan Houston this week. Yeah. Philip, who, while a possible, is still a test, uh, according to the club, let alone any other fun element that kind of lands our way heading into this final week of the year. Is it the same mindset approach for you? when you're pushing in rankings, knowing AFL Fantasy, you can at least see the real round ranks plus the top 100 is pretty clear. Your top 1% of Supercoach, you can see the ownership percentages. Is it the same ideology of neutralize versus separation? Or is there a little bit different stakes on the line when it comes to your rankings focus? I think it's a bit of both. And if you're at that point and you're competing, well, congrats, you've got to this point. 
have fun with it in the last round. We've seen some absolutely crazy moves from coaches in the past few years to actually win the entire competition. And that's not an easy thing to do, but you look at one that might be something that you could consider this week, the Jeremy Cameron against West Coast. That's something that I would definitely be having a piece at, especially the fact that they play really early. But the aim of the game with the classic formats to try and maximize your ranking is to try and maximize the number of points that you score. And neutralizing gets you so far. Neutralizing allows you to be defensive in the rank position you have. And if you've got a lead of 50, 100 points over where you want it to be, say your goal is to finish with a hat and you've got a player that a lot of them don't own and you've got a player that you're missing that a lot of them do own, trading that player to you know the player that's highly owned in the top 100 could be a good way to be defensive. It can backfire. I had that backfire against me a couple of years ago and, and slips nearly too far out. But it can be the way to try and defend your spot and to maintain that top 100 finish up is what your aim is for. But the name of the game still is to just maximize your points. And so if you've got a player that's got a bad matchup and you can trade them for a player that's got a good matchup, that tends to be the way to do that. I do want to pick your brain on matchups shortly because again there are some players that have got and you've already alluded to one already that on paper and on thought process which is really all we can judge right now um that has a phenomenal potential matchup and then there are some and you've already alluded to one team that have a potentially really challenging matchup let alone knowing where that team sits in the round um their season might be either on the line or cooked regardless of that. Maybe we should look at what this round's matchups look like. Maybe not so much in terms of teams, players, all that kind of stuff, although we'll get to that. But Sunday's an interesting day with zero overlap. Saturday, there's some great VC options for us to take early through there. What? How should we be looking at the way the structure of who is playing when and where Does this change when and where you make your trades, let alone who you're trading to, who your vice captains are, all that kind of stuff, or or the loopholes you might be able to access? How should we be approaching the cadence here of of this round? Because it, it does feel like if you're in it for a league win or you're going for your highest rank, yes, normally you might not be as glued to your phone, but this week is the moves you make this week will ultimately determine the round results more than ever before. I mean, the lack of overlap on the Sunday is like that we don't get really through the Mm. regular season, except in round 24 when they want to maximize the number of people that are tuning in. And you look at those matchups that we've got on the last day, there are some hugely relevant names. You know, you look at Western Bulldogs versus GWS, Bontempelli, English, Tom Green, Lockie Whitfield, Adam Trelaw, Bailey Dale, Ed Richards. There's a half a dozen names just there alone. Yeah. Carlton versus St. Kilda, Jack Steele, Paddy Cribs, Sam Walsh, Ron Marshall. Yikes. And then the last game, Freo Wingen versus Miller. Port Adelaide. Houston is going to be missing. Whether or not yep. they are successful at appeal, he will still be getting he will miss. weeks yep. of suspension. But then you've got Zach Butters, uh, Connor Rosie. Maybe people have got a, Lockie, uh, a Logan Evans, rather, as the yeah. cover for, for Houston. Fremantle, you've got Caleb Sarong. <laughs> Uh, Andy Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Clark. Hayden Young, Clark, Ryan. It's just... That you could day, have 12 players playing that day very easily, if not more. Easily. You easily could have 12 players playing that day. So what you've got to be able to do is you've got to be able to identify, like, where are the opportunities that I can take throughout the entire round? Mm. Uh, we've got the lack of overlap on the Sunday. We've got a Friday, we've got two Saturday early games, a middle game and two late games. So that's pretty standard for a Saturday. And then the non-overlap on the Sunday. So look at where your loops are. Like, if yeah. you've got a Dan Houston and super coach, and you've got another red dot, maybe consider trading the other red dot instead and holding Houston for that very late loop, that very late captaincy if you want to pull it off. Yeah. Because that could be the difference in your, uh, in your draft matchup or in your, uh, in your league grand final. You might say, I've got a 120 captain. Most weeks I might not take that. But if it's all I need to win my league, maybe I'll take it. Well, it gives you the option to look at a a Lawson Humphreys who plays early in the round against West Coast. If he plays like he did last week against St Kilda, well, that's more than adequate coverage for a Dan Houston. Yeah. Like we've got Manor against West Coast as well. We're talking about a Jeremy Cameron. You could even look to loop him if you've got that extra position available to you in AFL Fantasy. 
I mean, if you're getting really ballsy, you could really even chuck a VC on him. There is a potential that he goes huge against West Coast with no Barras and no Gov. Mm. Like that's that that screen is like the Jezza of a few years ago that won people competitions. Like that's the yeah. One you, yeah. But alongside that, you've got a fantastic matchup as well. Richmond versus Gold Coast. Yeah. Like that screams the ability for someone like Flanders or Anderson to have a day out as well. Just really rack it up. Show that they can win away from home. Yeah. Give a couple of them. Hawthorne versus North Melbourne is probably the trickier game. I'm not sure that I would go there with anyone in particular except no. Cherry. Agree. He's, he's a beast at the moment. <laughs> he, he, it's just because he's in such good form as well. Like, man, he's one to, to have a little pencil in. Maybe not into the Black Book quite yet, but I think a lot of people are eyeing him off for next year as well, just, with just how good he's been in the second half of this year. Yeah, it's true. The Saturday night is very interesting because I'm not sure there's mm. any massive ways that people will go with players. You know, we've got Brisbane so. versus Essendon. Main relevant players are probably Martin, Merritt, <laughs> Dunkley. Dunkley, Neil, Neil Supercoach, I don't mind bit. it. Although I, I think he gets sure. a runner on him. Yeah. I think so too. And I'm not sure you're really going to look at a captaincy there either. Not really for Sydney versus Adelaide either. Um, nah. Which is, it feels like a very strange one to say because, you know, you've got Errol Gould in there who's been pretty good for the majority of the year. But it's just not one that I'd have enough guts into. And if you're nah. looking at that and you're saying, I don't have Cherry. I talked to VC on one of those earlier games on the Saturday. You're rolling into the Sunday with a captain decision. To make. And to me, Jeez, that's a tough there's weekend. one big one that I'd be looking at. Who's that? Rowan Marshall. Mm-hmm. If you've got him, I'd be very comfortable rolling into him on the Sunday. If you don't have him, it's going to oh be boy. a very big thing you have to have because none of the options stand out. Well. We know Bedford's running to somebody. It's yep. probably most likely Trelaw would be my guesstimate. Um, I agree there. Uh, Port Adelaide versus Fremantle. Jeez, you don't want to put a C on any of those guys. I, I know Butters has the ability to go absolutely beast mode, but we will know before that game starts whether it is hot in the kitchen for Fremantle. Are they a chance at finals? Are they not? For Port Adelaide, they will know. Is the second spot in the league already stitched up for them or not? So there is a world where this could be in that Richmond Gold Coast bruise free football as you like, where it's like, we're we're top two, doesn't matter. We're out of finals, doesn't matter, who cares? Equally, this could be the first of many finals um that, that come through. So I, Butters and- would be the only one, but I, I don't feel very comfortable on the last game of the year putting a C there. I wouldn't either because Freire have had the guts to actually put a run with Roll on Butters previously. It's true. And they don't do it very often, but he's one that they've identified in the past as being enough. So realistically, you've just got to decide, like, if you're looking at that early VC option on the Saturday, which I think 90% of coaches probably should be. I don't think yep. there's anyone you're going to really VC on the Melbourne versus Collingwood game unless you're feeling like a day cost. Which yeah, Dacos is a decent option. shout. It's a good matchup on it's paper. A good matchup I, at the I see it. For the inside midfielders. Yep. You're probably reverting back to one of those more safer type characters. Yeah. So the big one that comes to mind is Zach Merritt, fairly safe guy. Yep. Donkley, probably fairly safe as well. Don't feel yeah. great about it. No. But that's the risk that you're taking by chasing one of these ceiling guys early in the round because you get a 140, 150, 160 type guy your weekend's set. Like, it doesn't 100%. matter really what happens with your trade-ins, with your outs, with who's, you know, what your opponent's doing. If you nail your vice-captain, you're just three steps through the front door already. Yeah. So, so I think we're right. Like, we, we want to talk about I do think of, of all your options on Friday night, Dacos is your best. Yep. If, if, again, you're like, I just want to know, I'm, I know I've got a Cherry or Marshall as my parachutes, and, and I think that's perfectly fine them to have them in that space given their form and opposition, perfectly fine. If you're like, I want to set myself up for Friday night, if I get 125 plus, lock it in, who cares, I'm going to take it. It does give you the visibility to start planning how you approach the rest of your week, putting some 
perceptional mm. pressure if you're in that league space. It does put a little bit of perceived pressure on your opposition coach to go, oh, now I might have to take a ceiling risk on a guy. Oh, I was planning on not going Jeremy Cameron. Now I'm going to jump, just picking names out of a hat now. Oh, Jai Simpkin, I'm going to find the cash to get to Jezza and force a trade move that there's a world where they both are equal and neutral in points. That's what just what the blessing and curse of F6 has been for us this year. Mm. But there is this perceptional early pressure that you can put on someone that forces someone to make a move. So personally, I'd probably still look at Cherry as a VC or a ceiling guy, and even in super coach, like a Jeremy Cameron could pop a 200 um, mm. in, in that sort of matchup. But, Geez, it is hard to take that VC away from Cherry. Mid-Saturday afternoon, unbelievable form. If they win, they spoil the party that I think most people think is locked in, which is Hawthorne back to finals. Mm. They can spoil it in one foul swoop. So, geez, I'd, I'd be interested. I'd find it hard to get off Cherry as a VC this week. It's really hard to avoid that, isn't it? Yeah, it, it very much is. You have to be thinking that he's got one of the highest ceilings. Yep. Form, matchup. Form as everything. well, matchup. Yeah. If you've got him, he's probably one of the easier ones to think about. He's yeah. trustworthy with the seed the last four weeks. Yeah. Five weeks in a row makes sense. Yeah. We talked about some guys that have good matchups, and we've mm-hmm. alluded to one that's not great, and that's more Fremantle mids specifically yeah. although you could argue ryan and clark can probably in that challenging scoring spot again everything could change should port adelaide be secure top two and frio season be done that could totally determine but that's why you've got to build the trades you make with the information you have at the time you pull the trade who are the teams and or players that if you could get out of them you'd feel relatively comfortable to trade out of. So Melbourne's a good matchup for Magpies. I don't think you're trading out of that. Gorn is is not where Cherry and English are. Um, oh, sorry, Cherry and Marshall, not Cherry and English, sorry. But outside of AFL Fantasy, you're probably not considering that trade. And AFL Fantasy, that might be the move you make. Hmm. Jeez, you're not getting out of any Eagles players if you're on them. You're still there. Geelong players. I know Max Holmes is, he's been really underwhelming the last kind of five or six weeks, but the fixtures there, should he get that transition scoring favorable space? North Hawthorne are a tough matchup. Do you get out of an LDU? Do you get out of a Simpkin? Simpkin. These are not. Do you get out of a McKercher? Ooh, he played mid forward on the weekend. He looked. Decent. You look good in the first half. Mm. Wasn't quite as good in the second half. <laughs> no. <laughs> but but that's the thing. Like it, it's so hard to make trades at this point of the year because yeah. you are trying to identify not only you know have they got a good matchup, have they got a bad matchup, but what is their role? And with teams that are down towards the bottom end of the ladder, they're going to experiment. They're going to try and figure out what they can do differently and prepare for next year. If he does play mid forward against Hawthorne. That's pretty scary. Like, I don't think that's going to be a good score from him. Mm-hmm. Same for Simkin. I think those are two that you could really look to try and take on and get an advantage on. Um, Brisbane versus Essendon, I think you could even look to move on a Dunkley if you wanted to get risky. Essendon yeah. Is a pretty brutal matchup for inside mids. If you think you can pick the tag, could you even trade out of a Neil? Oh, yeah. Especially Supercoach. Getting out of Trelaw with Bedford. Yeah. Like these are the sorts of moves where you really can try and take it on because you're looking at the guys that are either highly owned with the potential for a low score yeah, or that are lowly owned and the potential for a low score and you're the only ones that are owning them. Yeah. And I think that Neil and Trelaw fit that second category quite quite highly, especially in AFL Fantasy and in Supercoach. Yep. They're not heavily owned as, as top eight midfielders. They're not heavily owned by people towards the top end of ranks. And if you can no. get out of them and preempt the tag and get to someone that has a clean matchup, like if you can get from them to, say, 
uh, I was trying to think of a good example. A new, no, probably not trying to. A Noah Anderson. Or, yeah. You know, you could even take a risk on someone like a, a Tim Kelly for a yeah. one-week punt. Taranto the against the Suns. Taranto against the Suns. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple, isn't there? Do you, That's... do you jump off a of Jordan Dawson, given who else is James Jordan going to tag with no Isaac Rankin? He's been tagging a lot less recently. He has. And he's normally been tagging against the teams that the Swans think they're going to struggle against or lose to. They need to negate this player. Yeah. Yeah. To, to ensure victory, yeah. And I think they know what he can do. Oh, yes, as well as any team. So, yeah. with top spot already locked up, basically, They're I'm not sure we see footy. him tag. Yeah, it's free kick they might just Yeah, they might just say, we know what he can do if he needs to go into the midfield. Let's see what our other structures can be. And he might just get off the chain. It's not like the other two games where Brisbane have to win to try and lock up that top two spot, where the dogs have to win to, you know, lock up their top eight spot. Yeah. These are the types of ones where you expect the tags to come a lot more. Sydney versus Adelaide, whilst, you know, Sydney are in the finals and Adelaide aren't, is probably one of the bigger dead rubbers of teams that are competing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So that might be where we see a bit of bruise free footy. And, you know, Dawson is able to get in the end of a lot of plus six chains, work his way around the ground, especially if there's no attention given to him. So... No, I don't think he's one that I'd be looking to trade out of. Yep, good. No, I like that. Uh, we'll open up the 2025 Black Book in a moment. We've helped you with some matchups, some captaincy calls, some fixture overlays already, and we've given you some advice inside the first 20 odd minutes of this podcast about how and where, if you've got a league approach, what you should be doing. Should you have trades in Supercoach and Dream Team? outside of fantasy where you've definitely got trades, how you should be preparing for your grand final matchups. But before we open up the 2025 Black Book, a reminder, if you haven't subscribed to us across wherever you get your audio podcasts, you can get the coaches panel there. If you haven't given it a five-star rating or review, make sure you do that as well. You can check out these videos in over on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and are followed over there. There is plenty of content coming in the off season. Yes, you get to see the waves from Mini Muck uh, right <laughs> throughout it. Uh, but plenty of stuff is coming from us in the off season. This might be the last strategy roundtable of 2024, but there's still plenty of stuff to come right throughout the month of October. Every single player that moves clubs via trade or free agency mechanism, I'll be doing a quick 10 to 15 minute video on every single player, giving you a review on the players, what it means for the club they've left, the club they've landed at, and my first take fantasy prospects for what it means for them in 2025. Throughout October and now November, all level Patreons and our Spotify podcast subscribers will get our top 50 Keeper Ranks podcast that Kane and I have put it together every single year. I think this is season four or five now that we're up to. There's generally about a dozen to 20 players that change in our top 50. Even if you don't play Keepers, it's a great insight to see the players that we're projecting movements from and could give you some classic perspective of who might just pop and who we're pretty hot on making a jump and those we're thinking of fading. So for keeper coaches, it's an absolute no-brainer to stay subscribed as a Patreon and a Spotify subscriber in the off-season. But if you're a classic owner and you just need some fantasy footy, those weekly episodes drop. And then, gosh, we hit December. We start talking positions. The prices get revealed. Then we do the team reveals with the formats and the team pickers opening up just a week or so before Christmas. So while you might be in the final few days of your 2024 fantasy season, make sure you stick around as a Patreon and a Spotify subscriber. There is weekly content coming from us that will not be getting made public, but you will gain access to. For everybody else, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Those videos, based many on the amount of guys that potentially could be moving clubs, I might be making just as many videos in that kind of three-week window that we've done for the entire season proper. Like, this could be a nasty mm. period of time for me. Oh, yeah. And we've got some very relevant players that are mm -hmm. looking to be moving clubs as well, you know. Dan Houston's name's been thrown up. Petrarca, Oliver, Huge. Cumming. Bailey Smith. the biggest name of all, I think, for fantasy purposes. You just beat me to it, Bailey Smith. Oh, I thought you were about to say Alex Neil Bullen. <laughs> but there's some big names. 
Shy Bolton. Yeah, Shy Bolton, Baker. Baker. Perryman. Rioli. Rioli. Jeez. It's, and it's Fantasy. not just yeah. where they're going It's and the opportunities that lie there. It's the vacancies and opportunities that they open up. And that's why these videos are, are so fun to do because it's not just this player here. What does it mean? It's this player goes here, it means, and this vacancy now. How do they fill exactly. it with their team? So lots of stuff for us to do. Before we go any further in wrapping up the episode, let's open up the 2025 Black Book one last time. These are players. We're not saying you have to start them. Far from it. It's just someone that either people have kind of completely forgotten about, blacklisted, or you just want to go something spicy just to give coaches panel listeners something to just chew on for the final episode of 2024. Would you like to go first, Mini Monk? Have you got one there? I've got someone too, but have you got something? I'll start with a nice, easy one. It's okay. a layup. It's been a All layup right. since he got injured in round zero. Kitty Coleman. Yeah. Just put it in. Don't forget. Put a nice big asterisk next to it. Circle it. Put exclamation mark next to it. Whatever you have to do, just don't forget him. He's going to slot in so easily to your team next year, and it's just going to be a nice thing. Well, AFL Fantasy is going to be priced off his 2023 season, uh, but for Super Coach and for Dream Team, whew, how, how do you not, outside of him being injured, how do you not pick him based on the price? that he's going to have for us. So, yeah. And, and I mean, even in AFL Fantasy, it's a 27% discount on a 2023 average that people already thought that was, value. was enough value to be able to start at. That's true. Like, that's, that's, that's the key. And he'll have basically done the full preseason too. So that's where the, yes, coming, guys coming back off ACLs are a concern at some point in time, but him, Bailey Smith... Like these are guys. Baz has obviously had an even longer period of time through the off season to get himself right. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Kitty's there for me. I'll go a little bit steer left. It's definitely got a super coach flavoring, but for AFL fantasy, I'm still pretty happy for it. Um, this year, he's currently ranked 22 in AFL fantasy for points. He's ranked 17th for average, and he's still managed to have 15 tons, and we've called it a bad year. While in Supercoach, he's ranked 40 for total points, 46 for average, just the nine tons, but he's missed multiple games this year. I believe he's only played 21 games this year and an average of 102. I'm talking about Jordan Dawson. Like universally, he has come back to the pack, still a very, very good player, but he's not the 110 safety beast that we've held him to be. He's the kind of guy where you go, is there five to 10 points per game of value in fantasy? maybe five more likely than 10. Is there 10 to 15 points per game of value in Supercoach? Yeah. If you think he and the Crows could be better than this year, and politely they can't get much worse, um, <laughs> then gosh, for a bad year to be a top 20 guy in fantasy and a top 50 guy in Supercoach when everything's gone wrong, his first ton was like round six in Supercoach this year. But to me, I'm just happy to put him in the black book because I think we're just going to discount him Go, yeah, bad year, career best year in 23, jog on. Whereas that's what the black book is for. It's not just the lay down mazares. It's not just the weird smokies. It's the ones that will gloss over and forget. And I think we'll gloss over Jordan Dawson. I'm not saying pick him. I'm just saying keep a consider, mark it down. And that's what the black book is for. Any last black book? Have you got a, have you got a wild black book? Of, nothing, just an oh. off the cuff. Here's what I'll do. I'm not going to give you any prep. This is how we're going to end the podcast. MJ putting sure. Mini Monk under pressure. I'm going to give you a team and you've mm -hmm. just got to give me a name to say mm -hmm. black book. First All name, right. I don't need the three. First name and we'll go. Adelaide. Fire me. Adelaide. Adelaide. Sure, Dawson, whatever. Oh, take a cheat code. I love that. <laughs> well done, mate. All right. <laughs> Brisbane. Sam Barry. Carlton. Sam Barry, okay, oh, Sam Barry. Okay. Brisbane. I was like, he's not Brisbane. Yeah, maybe. Tom Duday is uh, having a chat. <laughs> Brisbane. Brisbane, the one I already got. Coleman. Nice. Carlton. Walsh. Oh. Collingwood. Dacos. Yeah. On. Essendon. Hobbs. Oh, you're Fremantle. Say it. Say it. 
Yeah, boy. Geelong. Is it just Baz? Conway. Is that unfair to say Baz and he's not there? Con- Conway, Conway. Conway, okay, that's unfair. Gold Coast. Uh, Daniel Rioli. He's not there, but we're throwing him in. Let's, it's happening, isn't it? <laughs> it it's not, a GWS. Yeah, it's Who's your, your one black booker? Oh, nice. No surprise, actually. Hawthorne. Day. One of the biggest Monties for 2025, if you ask me, especially in AFL Fantasy. Melbourne. Trent Rivers. Oh, okay. Someone might be thinking of a, someone leaving that midfield, potentially. North Melbourne. Harry Sheasel. Underrated pick. I like it. Port Adelaide. Rosie. Yes, yeah, super easy call, isn't it? Richmond. This yes, so could be fun. Oh, Tim Taranto. There you go. I, I thought you were heading for Tom Lynch and Supercoach for a second. I was like, oh, that could get interesting. Uh, St. Kilda. Oh. Ooh. Matthias Philippou. Of course. Yes. There you go. Take the easy win. Final three clubs, Sydney. Mills. Nice. West Coast. Harry Edwards. Ooh, I love the spice at the end. And Western Bulldogs. Pick a mid. Tim English. Yes, I like it. Rapid fire, putting Mini under pressure. And that is how we're going to wrap up our fantasy footy season with you. Don't worry, Patreons and Spotify subscribers, the ton of stuff coming for you in the off-season, let alone the final 2024 Focus podcast where we do the Q&A episode that drops Friday morning. Hey, Mini, it's been a pleasure doing another fantasy footy season with you. Uh, on behalf of all the coaches, panel, community, we're grateful for you and the great advice you've given over the season. It's been good to be on throughout the season and I can't wait for 2025 to wrap up once 2024 is over. Uh, That's it. Start up rather. You know what I mean. Well, that's true. We got there in the end. Hey, a massive thanks to to Kane, uh, to Jordox, to Rids, uh, to Matty Mottram, um, to Tim, to Jimmy, to Fox. Um, I think I said Kane in there. If not, he's just got his second shout out on the way. A massive thank you. This is the team that some of them you know and have heard on the podcast this year. Others you might know from a bygone era, but are still active in the background. Uh, the coaches panel is a, a fantastic community of people, and we are so thankful that you would listen and watch and it enables us the opportunity to provide you with fantasy football advice. Uh, but the biggest thank you goes to you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We hope we've been able to help you navigate this 2024 fantasy season if it's gone well for you we're so happy to hear it if it's not the good news is there's just what, a handful of sleeps to go and you can just turn that tab off and open up the 2025 black book and start thinking about the new year as you head to this final nine games of football we hope the moves you make this week if you've got the opportunity to make any absolutely work for you we hope the vice captaincy and captaincy calls you make pop and we hope that you are holding up your league silverware or hitting a career best rank by the end of this coming weekend thanks for being a part of the coaches panel in 2024 we can't wait to spend the off season with you looking at all the big moves that are going to happen and bringing on an exciting 2025 fantasy footy season